There's one day left before the most important election of our lives and most important election since 1860. And the candidates were out making their final case to the American people. And this is the case that the president has been laying out for the last couple of weeks. This is the one he's been laying out as his final case to the American people. You, you may be frustrated sometimes with the pace of change. I'm frustrated too sometimes. But you know where I stand. You know what I believe. You know I tell the truth. Wow. He's frustrated just like you. Going on his how many vacations a year. Jetting all around. Not having to worry about the price of gas. He's frustrated just like you. Just like you. But you know that he always tells the truth. You know where he stands. That's his case. You know where he stands. Israel doesn't know where he stands. Iran doesn't know where he stands. The SEALs don't know where he stands. The parents of SEALs who have lost their lives don't know where he stands. People who said, hey, gas is too expensive. And then heard him say, it was only $1.87 when I got into office because Bush had destroyed the economy. They don't understand where he stands. Small business owners don't know where he stands. People looking for a job don't know where he stands. We've discussed several times before, including very recently, the proven lies. There are things that you don't really know where he stands, and then there are proven lies that he has told. I've... I've I've never looked back and not this is not a judgment on him. This is more a judgment on America and the press. I've never looked back and marveled at how many people will either fall for or accept, knowingly accept a falsehood. I've never seen it before in my life. And after being caught in lie after lie after lie that he has the audacity to look the American people and the media in the eye and then say, you know, I always tell the truth. You can't go through all of the things that we have gone through the last four years because it is unbelievably numerous. The places where he actually lies to you, says one thing, but then is caught on tape saying something else behind closed doors. He was asked, is it fair for somebody like you making $20 million a year to pay a lower tax rate than a nurse or a bus driver? And Romney said, yes, I think that's fair. That, that didn't happen. That's not true. That was an out-and-out lie. And every fact-checker on the planet has already said that's a lie. And Obama knew it. Romney was specifically referring to the principle that capital gains should be taxed lower than other income because it's been taxed once already. A principle, by the way, that Obama agrees with in his own tax policy. But that hasn't stopped President Obama for knowingly distorting and lying. Obama has continually lied about Romney's plan for GM. And while lying about it, he calls Romney the liar. Even though virtually every fact check organization has backed Romney on it. Romney wanted GM to go through bankruptcy. Yes. A managed bankruptcy. That doesn't mean put it out of business and destroy it. Every airline has gone through managed What is wrong with us, America? Then Romney wanted to go the extra step and say loan guarantees from the U.S. government to keep them going forward. Obama continues to claim that women rely on Planned Parenthood for mammograms. They don't. Planned Parenthood doesn't do mammograms. But that's the way he can say, I'm not talking about abortion. I'm talking about the great work that Planned Parenthood does on mammograms. They don't do mammograms. Obama claimed that Romney lied about oil production on government lands. He didn't. He was right. And virtually every fact, I think every fact check organization verified that within minutes of him saying it. For eight years now, Obama has claimed that business get a tax break for shipping jobs overseas. Romney says, I've been in business my whole life. I've never even heard of that. I've been in global business. I've never got on a tax break. Obama mocked him, called him a liar. So what are the facts? 
if you ship your jobs overseas, you can deduct the moving cost. Now, that's not a tax break. You're spending the money to move overseas. That's no tax advantage. That j- the tax advantage would have to continue on after the move. Just like, just like every other company in the world, it's not a special thing. If I move my company from one place to another, if I move it from New York, please, people in New York, move to Texas. And on Wednesday, listen to me. If he loses, if Romney loses, move soon. I will get a business deduction for moving those people from New York to Texas. That's the way it works. That's not to move people overseas. It's, it's fairness. It's the same for every company. Are you telling me that there aren't some companies that need to say, hey, Bill, we've got to open this up in China. We've got to be over there. We need a representative. So they're not going to get their tax deduction for moving? but they will for moving someplace here in the United States. That doesn't make any sense. There's no incentive for being overseas. On the Benghazi situation, even Candy Crowley admitted after the debate that it was Romney who was right about the way uh, Obama had presented that attack. He continues to lie about that. Obama hasn't. He keeps saying it. Mr. President, I'm sorry. But we don't know that you always tell the truth. In fact, I contend a vast number of Americans know just the opposite. We also know that you're nasty, you're small-minded, and you're divisive in much of your rhetoric. And I know you don't like to hear that, and nobody likes to say that to the President of the United States. But... We have tons of evidence of you doing it from 2010. But they're going to be paying attention to this election. And if Latinos sit out the election, instead of saying we're going to punish our enemies and we're going to reward our friends who stand with us on it. We're going to punish our enemies? He was specifically talking about anyone running for the GOP. Punish if Latinos don't punish our enemies. If that is not small, nasty, and divisive, I don't know what is. But that's just that's just one of the many examples. That one's from 2010. I can give you one from this weekend. And at the time, the Republican Congress and a Senate candidate by the name of Mitt Romney. No, no, no. Don't boo. Vote. Vote. Voting's the best revenge. I've never seen a candidate more. Un-American, not anti-American, un-American. This isn't the way American presidents behave. To extol revenge, to punish your enemies. Valerie Jarrett just came out with a tweet just last week. Well, what is the exact quote, Pat? Do you happen to have it there? That there's going to be retribution after the election. Yeah, payback, she said. Yeah, there's going to be payback after the election. What is that? That's not bringing people together. That's the exact opposite of Abraham Lincoln. And that's why it's all going to come to an end tomorrow. After we win this election, it's our turn. Payback time. Everyone not with us is against us, and they better be ready because we don't forget. The ones who helped us will will be rewarded. The ones who opposed us will get what they deserve. There's going to be hell to pay. Let me tell you something. What? That, that, that's that Valerie Jarrett. That's Valerie Jarrett. His closest friend. Closest Closest friend. Closest advisor. Yeah. Read that again. America, you need to hear that. After we win this election, it's our turn. Payback time. Everyone not with us is against us, and they better be ready because we don't forget. The ones who helped us will be rewarded. The ones who opposed us will get what they deserve. There's going to be hell to pay. Let me tell you something. I'm going to share this with you. Um, I wasn't wasn't going to, but, but 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 I am. If you look at history through a biblical worldview, the last step before a a nation is completely destroyed is they drive the righteous from among them. If this isn't a sign of a group of people that will drive the righteous from among them, and that's the last step before God's wrath comes, I, I fear 
for our country. And it is, it cannot be overstated. It cannot be called paranoid. The best revenge, punish your enemies. And Valerie Jarrett last week saying we don't forget, that's Occupy Wall Street. That's the French Revolution. It's now it's our turn. What are you talking about? You've had the last four years. What do you mean? Now it's your turn. That goes to Vladimir Putin. I'll have more flexibility. Hear me. If you are a God fearing person, hear me. Last call, America. Last call. Because the righteous will be driven from among them. They are nasty, divisive, and I'm sorry, but there is no way to describe that, uh, that quote from Valerie Jarrett other than evil. Warning. Saul Alinsky is just the beginning of these people. But I believe in the American people. I believe that we are not too far gone. I believe that people can watch and see the difference. They can feel the difference. When you watch Barack Obama, you can just see he is angry. When you watch Mitt Romney, you can see he is not. We are not an angry nation. We don't listen to demagogues like that. It doesn't work. No matter how much power he has amassed, no matter how many friends in the media he has, Americans know. And if they reject it this time, if they're so dead inside, and it's a possibility, they're so dead inside they can no longer see the difference between good and evil, we have to be destroyed because we will be a remarkable evil on this planet. Our technology alone would make us so dark and so spooky that it is beyond comprehension. But I don't think we're there. Thomas Jefferson said, trust the American people. They will see their mistake and they will correct it. I have prayed this whole election. For 40 days I have fasted. Lord, just let people see who Mitt Romney is and let people see who Barack Obama is. I didn't ask for any special favors, not somebody to win one way or another. Just let people see who they are. Now it's up to you. Now that you've seen them, What are you going to do about it? Are you going to vote because it's the best kind of revenge? May I ask, revenge for what? What have we done to people that make them so angry? What have we done? We disagree with each other. What have we done to you? Created a country? that allowed you to become the president of the United States of America? My gosh, what a curse around your neck. What have we done? That's how twisted and evil and angry and divisive they really are. And you hear that? And you hear that quote from Valerie Jarrett? And then you have to choose. Do you want that? Or do you want this? Do you see what President Obama said today? He asked his supporters to vote for revenge. For revenge. Instead, I asked the American people to vote for love of country. The choice is a simple one. And it is in your hands tomorrow.